Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is another episode of The Big Conversation with, of course, Craig Mitch and Rhys James. Unfortunately, Emma can't be with us today because she's lost her voice, bless her, probably uh, judging by her text on Sunday night from shouting at various Spurs players underperforming mm. uh, in the Newcastle game. Yeah. Uh, anyway, onwards and upwards, uh, today's topic is who will finish in the top four at the end of of the Premier League season. I'm going to start it with you, Craig Mitch. What are your feelings? Uh, do you want me to just go through my top four? No, I just, uh, well, yes, you can at the top and then give us some, some thoughts. Uh, so I'm going with City to come in first, Arsenal second, Leicester third and Spurs fourth. I think we're going to pip United to top four. Um, they haven't been convincing me. I feel mm. like a lot of players don't believe, this is my United, by the way, uh, don't believe in LVG's philosophy, the way he likes to play football. A lot of those players, they want to express themselves, mm -hmm. the likes of Martial, um, Memphis, and they can't express themselves under him, whereas I feel like we're going in the right direction. All right, we kind of took half a step back against Newcastle, but we can always leap forward again. And I feel like we've got a philosophy over here. The players believe in our manager. They believe in the way we're playing. And that's not happening over at Man United. Do that's going to work against Something them. that I think is key is... Which team, uh, which teams, uh, let's, let's take, I'm afraid to say, let's take City and, and Woolwich out of this. I think the key will be which teams can beat uh, the clubs who come to their ground and play 11 behind the ball. Uh, yeah. Do you think Spurs, well, let, let me throw this to Reese. do you think Spurs are going to beat more teams who come to us like that than Manchester United are? Because I'm not sure about that, to be honest. Well, you know what? United have always become one of those clubs, haven't they? They've always become one of those clubs who throw 11 behind the ball, yeah. grind out a 1-0. Uh, in the last minute and stuff like that, and it's just it's a bit depressing actually. But that, that's why their fans all chanting attack, 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 attack all the time. Yeah, exactly. And whereas we are not that sort of side anymore, um, we certainly used to be, but we're not anymore. We, I don't know, we're getting better at breaking down those teams, but in the last few weeks, if you'd asked me this question a couple of weeks ago, my answer might have been different. And it's not because of results, it's more because of how tired we've looked. Before, right. I thought we're a young squad, we're so fit. Uh, we're so energised, we can sort of like outrun, outplay anyone. Mm -hmm. But last couple of games, I've thought we've looked really exhausted yeah. um, off our game. And I think if that's happening at Christmas, I know it's a busy period and stuff, and we're always going to be busy playing on Thursday and a Sunday, but if we're going to stay in the Europa League, hopefully, and keep going on, we're going to get knackered. We've not got that big a squad. Like this player, as soon as Dembele's injured, we really miss him. Yeah. If Eric Dyer gets injured, if Harry Kane that, gets to injured. To be honest, that's an amazing state of affairs, isn't it? Because... I think it's fair to say that at the end of last season, totally we would never have said that we'd Wouldn't miss Moussa Dembele. No, which is yeah. incredible. He's done very well. And it's, again, competition has helped. But, but it's just that we just looked too knackered. And I but why? We rested, we rested like five or six players uh, for the Europa midweek game. And, yeah. and they should have had, they had a whole week's rest. Also, let's not forget, you know, yeah. I do think the Chelsea result at home was a good result. But I, it, this isn't the first time it's happened. The Stoke game earlier in the season, which I think was our first home game, we were 2-0 up in that game after the first half. And then we let them come back into it. So there is, uh, you know, if I were going to put something on it, I would say it's more a lack of experience that doesn't, they, the young team doesn't quite know yet how to see those kind of games out. Is, uh, is that going to stop, you know, yeah. is that in the end going to stop us from reaching that top four? Uh, I, I think we're going to get top four. I, I genuinely do. I feel like... You also I, said we'd win five out of the next five games. I know, I was over optimistic. They were very winnable on paper, yeah, yeah. admittedly. The games were very winnable on paper, but obviously... It, for whatever reason, it hasn't worked out that way. But it's an opportunity now, like you said, for us to bounce back. Mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of relying on that 14-game undefeated run. I feel like a lot of the players mentally didn't want to concede right. yeah. that. They wanted it to keep going, when really and truly they should have just been taking more risks and trying to win the game. They were playing it safe too much. But now we've lost the game, so it's going to be interesting to see how we can bounce back from that loss. Okay. And, and what about... Mm -hmm. So I was just going to raise a point, Go which is, you said about the philosophy thing, is that we've got one up on United because all our players subscribe to Pochettino's philosophy, yeah. whereas Van Gaal's got a bit of an issue with his, whether or not he's got the dressing room. What about Klopp? So Liverpool, do you think Liverpool have got a chance? Because they no. all subscribe to Klopp's philosophy. They're all holding hands. No, I don't you know, think. The fans of the uh, touchline. What yeah, did you think of that after the West Brom game? He, it's this German thing, isn't it, that he did mm. at Dortmund. But it strikes me that that's more of a cultural thing with German football, where the fans sure, are much, the fans, fans are a lot less mm. cynical, I think. You just than hit the nail on the head. head. I, I don't think he really knows what Liverpool's about. Anyway, enough of that. I <laughs> think. Can I just say one thing about Liverpool whilst we're still on them? That is a, another great example of a team right now that is struggling to beat the teams mm. uh, who are setting up like that. Yeah. They're not so, his players. Whereas, yeah, but hold on, hold on. But whereas they've beaten Man City, they've beaten Chelsea and away from home and turning teams over where the teams are coming at them. And I, that's what I think, you know, I mean, you said you asked 
Um, Craig, whether he, you thought he thought Liverpool would be a threat, but do you think they'll be a threat or, or not? Yeah, I do, yeah. I think it's going to be a bit of a scramble for that fourth spot, mm. like it always is. But I think this year especially, because I think we're such a young side that it's just like it will experience player part, especially as the season goes on, pick up a couple of injuries and we're a bit screwed. Uh, Liverpool, Van, I mean, sorry, Klopp's got a lot of work to do with a bunch of players that he's inherited. And make, yeah, he can sign a few people in January, but he can't make full no. overhaul changes. And then Man United, are they just going to keep grinding out these results? I yeah. think it's going to be a real scramble. Leicester will be in there, but I think they're going to... I think they're going to get third. I think, I think he's hit the nail on the head there. The thing with Klopp, those are not his players. He needs to kind of weed them out like Poch did for a whole right, year. Right. Yeah, and yeah, figure yeah. out who's going to adapt to that high-pressing philosophy. A lot of them are not probably up for that. And they, he's going to weed it out as it goes along. I actually think United and Everton are both going to finish above Liverpool. Really? Yeah. I genuinely yeah. think Everton look very, I think Everton very do look good. Let, let's they just bring up, you, you mentioned them, Leicester. Um, obviously, we're filming this the day after they beat Chelsea 2-1. They keep getting these results. Uh, it's a bit of a fairy tale story. I mean, it reminds me, Ipswich did it maybe in about 95 and ended up coming about fifth or sixth. They'd had a great run. And then back into the 70s, Nottingham Forest came straight up and, and actually won the league. But it seems in this day, of, day and age of money and stuff, it can't continue. It just can't, can it? You think they'll come third? I think they'll get top four. I do think they'll get top four. What's your top four? You haven't said. What is your yeah. order? My, at the moment, is City, Arsenal, Leicester, United. You don't think we'll do it? I think we will not do it by one point but we'll win the Europa League, so it's fine. So we're five <laughs> points better off than, than last year because we finished six points behind. Yeah, I think, I think we're a much better side than last year. I think we'll do better than last year. Only five we'll, points much better. Get, we still won't get four. Well, we're still a, we're still a growing team. One, one club we haven't mentioned yet, of course, is Chelsea, uh, currently languishing, I think, in 15th, 16th place. This uh, is a top four discussion, by It's me. a top four discussion, but are they completely out of it to you? Completely, uh, top four of the championship next year, maybe. The way they're I'm going, honestly, the, at this point in time, they would be lucky to finish top half of the table the way they're playing. Even Mourinho Nine said, losses. said it's over, didn't they? Well, uh, I want to use an example, which was British Dortmund under Klopp last season were bottom of the Bundesliga yeah. at this point and going into January as well. They ended up, I think, seventh. Uh, it is that kind of thing, you know, teams go on a run. But I've been saying this for about two months now and Chelsea are yet to do it. Uh, I absolutely think it'll turn around and I think they'll start getting wins. Mm. Um, I've 13, thought that a few times this season. They're 13 points, I think, off Man United in fourth. I can't, I just can't But that's see only them. four points more than we're behind no, Leicester. There's like seven There's like seven or eight teams they need to rely on to, to mess up right. and, and concede it's games. Not, and they've all got to play each other. It's just it's not just about them winning. Right. It's about other teams losing, isn't it? And right. you just can't see, or like, yeah. You can't see the other teams not at least drawing. Right. And there's so, so many other teams playing well at the moment. Palace are playing well, Everton's playing well, even Watford's playing well, Liverpool playing okay. There's too many teams above them. That it's are, one of those seasons this year, isn't it, where just constant surprises. Anything can happen this season. That's why I think if we can, you know, this is the most positive I can be coming up to the Christmas period. If we can beat Southampton, then the, and I feel they'll come at us and give us space. If we can beat them, and the, you know, if we got three wins, it's positive, but if we got three wins, then I think we could seriously think about a top four. This is, this is the margins we're talking about in football right now. If we had beat Newcastle right I now, know, we'd yeah. be sitting here saying that top four is 100% on the cards because we're already essentially in the but top four. But you know, four. if we'd have lost that game and we'd have performed Which the way we've been performing earlier in the season, I still would be saying that we would finish higher up. But then if we performed that, we wouldn't have lost to Newcastle. That's just, no, it's Newcastle, those, those it's not results, Arsenal. Those results happen. Sometimes They're you happening play, to everyone. Sometimes you Except play really Leicester. well and you just get unlucky. But we just didn't, there's that second half. I just think we can do that. Spurs can do that. They can switch off. We still got that in us, especially with the young side like that. And they can just they don't see out games yeah. as much as they yeah. should. I don't like this, I felt, this I young did, side. I thing. felt I well. I, it's good to have a young side. I want us to have a young I don't, side. I don't like that th this kind of excuse that we're a young side. It's just at the end of the day, there was a clear objective. We possessed yeah, way yeah. more quality than the other team, no, and I'll we should have got the well, job yeah. done at home in front of our own fans. That's true. true. But also, let's let's bear this in mind. In terms of all the other teams around us including Everton, who spent 28 million on Lukaku just a season ago, in the last four years or whatever, we haven't spent any money. So, yeah. so in terms of, you know, we are investing in this young team, so we do have to give them some uh, blips, basically, I think. You know, I think you do have you to be open what? to that to some degree. We but, had Maurice in goal, they had Elliot. Can we bounce Elliot, back? who is Elliot? Well, he had a great Billy game. Elliot. He had a great He's going to tap dance he, all around White Hart Lane. I don't want to hear it. He did have a great game. Exactly, but we, we've got the world-class keeper who lets goals just slip underneath him when no, it matters. He, he had two saves to make. Oh. And, he, and he didn't make them. That's football. That happens. That I tell you what, if we sign, if we sign a couple of players in January, I'm having us third. If we sign a striker Who? in January. Berahino. Nah. Hold on. Let's Not say. Berahino. Let's say we Back had. Jezinko. Hold on quickly. Let's Back say we had it. this other striker that everyone wants. When would he have got involved in a game against Newcastle? Would you say? Would you take Harry Kane off? Jimmy, give you, you a perfect example. Yeah. Chelsea v Leicester. Yeah. Lloyd Remy comes on and scores a goal. Right. That's what you have. 
You have someone that can come on and create impact and offer something different. Costa right. was just being a nuisance, didn't really work. They put Remy on and Remy scored a header. That is what you need. You need it. If, if the last 20 minutes, you need something different. Right. And we don't have... When Harry Kane's dropping deep, just trying to get scraps of the ball and not playing in his position, there's, we need someone that will just stick up there and, and realise that they just need to get a goal. And that's what Mitrovic did. Yeah. Mitrovic came on and realised yeah. Pape Cisse wasn't doing anything. He realised, I just need to get in that box and be a nuisance. And he grabbed him a goal. And then he it's was involved about, in the second goal. And it's about ha having the option. It's about depth. And it's about, well, it's about competition. I'm not saying Harry Kane hasn't been good, but he hasn't looked fresh for a while. Right. So you think getting another player in would also make him up his game a bit as well? Not necessarily up his game. It would just give him a chance to maybe have a, you know, have 60 minutes off for a bit. All right. So he they can asked come Mitrovic back after the game. They asked him, they asked him after the game, what was, what was the plan when you came on the field? And he said, just to score. Just yeah, to score. Yeah. That's it. Chuck someone off That's all a striker wants to do. Score. Is score. We need options. We need someone else that can come on and just wants to grab a goal and prove themselves. And, and we don't have that. All right, guys. Okay, so just coming to the end of it, you know, you said you think we'll definitely come fourth. You said you don't think we will, but if we I make really a signing. I really don't know. I really don't know. At this point in time. And you want the guy from Marseille as the signing, that's what you're saying. You think that could push us up to third? Yeah, I think he'd be a good, I think he'd be a good Man, you know, it's our only competition, you know, really. Liverpool a bit, but Man United's in that spot. They they finished the Wolves last season and they're yeah, there you know right what? now. I do, and they're not great. I do think we're a lot better than Man United this year, but well, they've got injuries. I do also have Spursy cynicism running through me, running through my veins. <sighs> I've been there before, mate. I've been there before right. every year. All right, guys. All right, guys. Let us know what you think of that little chat we had in the comment section below. Where do you think we'll finish up? Where who do you think will be in the top four? Let us know. And uh, also, most importantly, give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter at SpurredOnTV. Come on, you Spurs. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Spurverts Part 1. This is the show where we talk about everything that's got us absolutely excited to be Spurs fans.